standing in the middle of the Mojave Desert today to talk about our featured mineral. And the only folks crazy enough to love wandering around the mud cracked basins and the rattlesnake filled mountains of the Mojave Desert are probably 19th century prospectors, a handful of desert rats, and geologists, of course. So, what does the Mojave Desert, the Vikings, tigers, and funky purple eyeshadow have to do with one another? Well, believe it or not, by the end of today's video, I will have you convinced that these things are actually related somehow. Hey everyone, I'm Heather. I am the sole creator and producer here at Let's Go Geo. And I spend a lot of time out in the field making these virtual geo field trips. I love doing it, but it is a lot of hard work. I've been in all kinds of interesting situations, out in the desert heat, running into rattlesnakes, dust storms, bears, scorpions, you name it. Unfortunately, the topics on this channel are just not trendy enough for YouTube to reward all the hard work. So I went on over to Patreon and created a Patreon fan page where you can provide minor support for all my work if you want to and make sure that I can continue to bring these virtual geo field trips. The link's in the description. All right, let's get back to talc. Can you imagine what it must have been like for the Vikings when they first arrived in North America? Whenever that was? Actually, in 2021, researchers published some interesting results about this in the journal Nature. Since the Norse site was first discovered and described in New Finland, researchers have tried to nail down a date for a sign of Viking presence in North America, but touting an exact date is tricky business, and up to this point, we've had to make do with speculation and a date range of about 793 to 1066 AD. But these researchers used dendrochronology and an event that is precisely datable to take it a step further. You see, there was a solar storm around this time, and they knew the exact date of it. It left a radiocarbon signature in the trees that they could use for this exact date. So the researchers used this solar storm signature and simply counted the tree rings to a time when they thought the Vikings were present in North America. They assumed the presence based on wood that was used to make tools that clearly were not used by the indigenous people of Newfoundland. Therefore, they were able to arrive at an exact date of around 1021 for Viking presence in North America. So now imagine yourself going across a vast ocean and coming to a new land. You'd probably bring with you some of your most cherished possessions. And just the same, the Vikings brought with them their cherished possessions. And one of the most characteristic features of the Viking material culture was this soft workable rock referred to as soapstone. All around Europe, such as the Shetland Islands, are quarries from historic mining of this soapstone. And along with it are also found artifacts of things like vessels and other material found from the soapstone. What made this rock so desirable is a major mineral constituent, talc. Talc, being a very soft and thus workable, yet heat resistant mineral, was certainly sought after by the Vikings and likely cultures before them. But it was also sought after by those 19th century prospectors. Now, what would make a man crazy enough to trek across the hot mud cracked basins of the Mojave into these mountains? Well, actually, at first it was silver and gold as usual, but believe it or not, after some time, it was also actually for this white stuff. And we'll explore what makes this so special today as we explore the world of talc. Welcome back everyone. As usual, I'm your geo guide, Heather. And today we're talking about talc. Now for centuries, people have been seeking after talc. But what exactly is talc? Talc is a mineral formed from metamorphic processes. From the Arabic word meaning mica, talc is classified as a silicate. It is more specifically a phyllosilicate or sheet silicate belonging to a group that also includes micas and serpentine. Chemically speaking, talc is a hydrated magnesium silicate. If we take a look here at the chemical formula for talc, we can see those components, the hydrated magnesium silicate. All right, let's take a look at some of the properties of talc. Its color is an apple green or white. The luster is pearly or waxy, and the feel or texture is a greasy, soapy kind of feel. 
The hardness on the Mohs scale is a one, making it one of the softest minerals around. You can scratch it with your fingernail. The streak will be white. Crystals are rare. It is a foliated, micaceous, massive mineral, typically. The tenacity is described as sectile. The mineral can be sliced with a knife, but the pieces themselves will be malleable. Much like many of the sheet silicates, it's flaky, like a croissant. And if we consider the chemistry of the mineral, it is held together at a molecular level by van der Waals forces. And if we remember, these are very weak bonds, which explains the crumbly nature of talc. Talc is also hydrophobic. It basically resists water. It also is resistant to heat and electricity and acids. And it's considered chemically inert. It's not very chemically active or flammable or explosive. All of these properties make it very useful in a lot of different industries, but we'll get to that in a little bit. If you're trying to identify talc, some of the best field markers is that softness. You can also look for the foliation. You can try the greasy feel. If you rub your thumb across the surface of it, it should feel kind of greasy. Uh, the coloration of being that apple green or white could be an indicator in combination with those other items. And also the context clues. If you are standing in an area that you've identified as a sill carbonate contact zone, then you've probably found yourself talc. Minerals that are similar to talc that might confuse you could be other sheet silicates like pyrophyllite, which is an aluminum silicate. Also serpentinite, chlorite, and some of those other soft white minerals like chert or chalk. All right, so how does talc form? Well, it basically forms two main ways, the first of which involves the hydrothermal alteration of ultramafic rocks. Ultramafic rocks are rocks that are magnesium rich. So they will be rich in magnesium minerals like olivine or perdot, pyroxene, and amphiboles. It involves a two-stage process, the first of which is the hydration of those magnesium minerals, such as the hydration of peridotite. And that forms serpentinite in a process called serpentinization. The second stage involves hydrating the serpentinite in a process called steatization, and that results in the formation of talc, a magnesium silicate, and minerals like magnesite, a magnesium carbonate. Another way is through the low-grade contact metamorphism of siliceous dolomites, which causes the alteration of those magnesium carbonate-rich rocks. Basically, an igneous sill intrudes those existing dolomite rocks, and through the contact of that sill with those dolomite rocks, silica-rich hot fluids move through the magnesium-calcium carbonates in a process that alters them and forms talc. This typically results in massive talc bodies, and it is associated with carbonates, chlorite, and sometimes quartz, but it often results in a tremolite talc body. Take a look at the setting here. What you see is this kind of pinkish, beigeish rock. That is siliceous, or cherty, dolomite, of what is called the crystal spring formation. And over here you see a darker body of rock. That is a gabbro sill that intruded this dolomite unit. And right here at the contact zone, you see this bright white mineral forming. That is the talc ore body that formed at the contact zone. This is a classic example of that carbonate sill contact zone or the low-grade contact metamorphism process that forms talc that we talked about. And this is a classic example of the type of talc that forms all over the Death Valley region and has been being mined here for decades. So where and why is talc mined? Talc is a mineral that makes up metamorphic rocks like talc schist or soapstone. Evidence of soapstone mining goes back thousands of years into human history, with artifacts being found from Egypt to Asia to North America, including those Viking-aged bowls and vessels. Recently, there was a soapstone vessel found in an old theater in Italy, and it was filled with gold Roman coins. In more recent history, talc was heavily mined in the Death Valley region of the United States. There's even a place nearby known as Talc City. During World War II, this California talc became so coveted that its use was actually restricted to anything other than the manufacture of electrical insulators. But the end of the war saw these restrictions lifted, and talc became used in a wide variety of manufacturing purposes, and California talc production continued to rise exponentially thereafter.
These Eastern California talcs are the talc tremolite bodies that result from the contact metamorphism. In contrast, talc that results from hydrothermal processes is mined today in southern Montana, who boasts some of the purest talc in the world. We'll see what this means and why it matters in a second. In 2017, U.S. talc sales, including what it exports, were over $100 million. But as we know, economics and global trade is weird, and the U.S. also imports talc from other countries, like China, Pakistan, Canada. The primary uses of talc are in the manufacture of things like ceramics, paint, paper, plastics, rubber, and some other uses like cosmetics. Oh yeah eyeshadow. And this is all due to talc's soft lubricating properties. But talc was also hiding a darker side. You see, talc is sometimes associated with asbestos. Now, asbestos is not necessarily a mineral itself. It's actually a fibrous form of a mineral or several different minerals that can cause respiratory issues if inhaled. Research by Van Gosen revealed that the talc forming environment may indicate whether or not that talc body will contain amphiboles and by association amphibole asbestos. And indeed the contact metamorphic talc deposits of the Death Valley region were consistently found to contain asbestiform fibers. This became a more infamous issue when Johnson & Johnson became under fire for the sourcing of their talc for their talcum powder or baby powder and the potential harm that it caused to women's reproductive systems. It even spurred a series of lawsuits. Fun fact, serpentinite is actually California's state rock, named so in 1965, but in the 2000s, many pointed out that perhaps it should be dumped because of its relation sometimes with asbestos. In recent years, India has become a large global supplier of the talc demand, boasting some of the largest and purest talc bodies. But this has come at a cost. This talc supply for users such as the cosmetics industry has been met through illegal mining in animal sanctuaries such as the habitat of tigers. Threatening an already endangered species. So there you have it, the hard truth about one of the softest minerals on the planet. And now you know what it has to do with Death Valley, your eyeshadow, and your favorite big cats, tigers. I'll be covering a lot more minerals here as I take you on virtual geo field trips with me here at Let's Go Geo. So join me on the next adventure.